Hello, welcome back to our air field tutorial. We still have our grid of particles with these little sphere shapes. I have it selected. I've already deleted the old uh, air field. We're going to start anew. So once again in the fields and solvers menu we can look at the air field and click the option box and I have the particles selected over here. Now we already looked at the wind. If I go to edit reset settings and click wind you can see the uh, settings that are typically def default. If I go to edit reset speed is typically five and inherent velocity is typically one so that again when the air field is moving that inherent velocity effect that we talked about in the last video is applied by default but when you choose wind it takes that inherent velocity away because it's kind of trying to simulate a wind effect and not necessarily uh, an effect of say if you were to if say if you had a character who was going to kick at the dirt and create like a dust cloud that inherent velocity of the leg moving and hitting the ground, you had that you would potentially have the air field attached to the boot, for example, and that motion of the boot of the character hitting the ground, causing the dust particles to move, you could have that inherent velocity attached to that. But with a wind effect, where you're just wind blowing through the trees or whatever, you don't necessarily need the inherent velocity, and the speed is much lower. So edit reset setting speed is at five. With a wind uh, preset, the speed's at 0.5. Now let's look at a let's look at a skip wake for now and look at fan. With a fan preset, you can see the differences here. Mainly, inherent velocity is on, so if the uh, air field is moving, the velocity of the air field's movement will take effect with the particles when it uh, is turned on. Go back to wind and then click on fan again just again see the difference you'll see that enable spread is turned on with a spread value of 0.5. I'm going to first hit apply. We actually create the air field. I'm going to kind of put it uh, kind of center left side of our particle effects. And again, our direction you'll see is one in the Y axis. And I'm going to actually change that to negative one in the Z axis. Let's go down here to direction Z negative one and I'll type zero for direction Y and let's hit play and see what it looks like boom I'm gonna hit stop it now so you can see let me minimize this with the fan preset we get this kind of cone effect coming from the position of the airfield going out in this spreading effect again that's what that spread setting turned on and it's negative z which would be in this direction. If it was the y value it would go up for example. So let's rewind and hit play. You can see it blow all out like that. Again rewind, play. You can see the effect. So it would be pretty cool for like explosions or anything like that where you have debris uh, flying out in a certain direction or again like with the character kicking the dirt you might use a fan for that too. You have this kind of spreading effect in a certain direction. Let's look back at the options here. Again, magnitude, attenuation, direction, speed, inherent velocity, we've already gone over all those. Inherent rotation, again, if the uh, air field is rotating, the effect of the air field will also inherit that rotation. Enable spread is turned on for the fan preset because we're spreading, they have, we have the effect being a spread effect with a spread value of 0.5. If we go down here, we see again our spread value of 0.5. If we decrease this value, say 0.1, rewind and play, you can see our cone effect is much more narrow. If we increase it to say 1 instead of 0.5, play, it's you know much larger effect. So that spread value is how is the angle of the spread. And a 1 value is essentially a 180 degree arc all around like this. Rewind that if, again with the default value of 0.5 press play that's actually a 90 degree angle or half of that 180 degrees but at this uh, perpendicular angle from the plane of the air field. So we have a 90 degree angle spread originating from here and projecting outward at this cone angled shape. Hopefully that makes sense. And here we have enable spread is turned on of course and hair rotation. All these settings over here you can essentially find in the options 
when you are creating the airfield. So let me minimize this or rewind that. I'm going to delete that airfield. And let's we can keep this grid of particle effects. Go back up to our air options here and let's choose wake. Let's just look at the differences between say fan, wind, and wake here. Wake we haven't looked at yet. A wind you'll see magnitude is five as well as fan, but if you choose wake, the magnitude is actually zero. Let's go back to wind again or fan. You see all these different other val all these other values are essentially the same except for inherent velocity with wake is all the way up to one as opposed to zero with wind. One as in with fan. There is no inherent rotation with wake, but it is component only. You'll notice wind does not have the component only checked, neither does fan. Fan has the enable spread and inherent, uh, inherent rotation. If you choose wake, however, it does not choose, it does not use inherent rotation or enable spread. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply that. So, what does that look like? Let's hit play. You notice we don't really see anything. So let's rewind this. And let me actually set up a little bit and I'll get back to you. Okay, so I've hidden the particles for now. Here's my airfield and I have again this little animation. So when I hit play, the airfield moves. I got a diagonal direction across the field of particles that I have. So I'm going to unhide the particles. You can kind of see now with the airfield moving through the grid of particles with again with the wake presets you can see the result it has so let me kind of center it a view here hit play and there you go as it passes through the affected particles it the particles are kind of caught up in the wake similar to you'd see like a boat passing over the water you see the water be uh, affected by the boat as it passes through and the, the field actually stops here but because of velocity and everything the particles kind of keep going, affected by the wake. Okay, so let's go back to the options here. So again with wake, our magnitude is at zero. We do have attenuation. We do have a directionality with the y-axis and speed, and but then the inherent velocity is really what takes hold of the particles with the movement of the field. There's, there is no magnitude, so it's all dependent on the field actually moving. Let's look over here, scroll down. Again, we see component only is on. Let's see what happens when we turn that off. So with my current airfield selected, if I turn component only off, rewind, hit play, you'll notice the difference. The particles no longer continue flying they kind of come to a stop they kind of come to a pause after the field itself stops moving so the field while the field's moving the particles are being pulled with it but then when the field actually stops the particles stop too so with component only turned off we have that kind of result with component only turned on the particles will continue on that path for as long as you have it uh, as long as you tell it to And there it goes. I think that's kind of cool. I like the wake effect. Let's go back to the options here. So those were presets. You have wind, wake, and fan. Of course you can just edit, reset these settings back to their default values and do whatever values you want. You don't have to use the presets. The presets are there to help you along if you're looking for these types of effects, which the airfield is definitely uh, useful for. Let's scroll down here. We have this other section down here called volume shape and you see volume determines the region where the field affects particles slash rigid bodies, which is also a good point. I'm using particles for the example here, but you don't have to use particles for fields. Fields can affect any dynamic object such as in this case it says here rigid bodies. So volume shape by default is none. There is no volume shape. It's using the other uh, settings to control the field, but we do have these shape uh, choices we can make. Uh, you'll see over here in the channel box the options for the current air field I have. If I mess with the air options here I'm not actually affecting the current air field that I currently have in my scene. 
So I go over here and I can look for those uh, particular settings. You can see that one reason, one thing about the channel box I don't like is that it just shows everything, like a big long list, right? But obviously, volume, you can see volume offset here. You can see these settings down here, volume offset, X, Y, Z, volume sweep, section radius, they're all grayed out. They have no effect, but they are still here in the channel box. You can see them, and if you didn't know any better, you might think that they would do something. And if I do any kind of value changes with the volume offset or section radius or volume sweep, anything to do with the volume stuff, it won't actually do anything until you say volume shape is something. So once I change the volume shape to, for example, sphere, you can see over here, now I have this sphere shape around my airfield to let me know the volume of the airfield. So only particles within that volume will be affected by the field itself. And you can change that shape to be different things. And with the shape and being turned on, then I can scale it and stuff, and, and I can actually affect the uh, region that the volume encompasses by scaling or rotating the actual field itself, and the sh volume will actually matter. So let's over here in the options, let's look at, say, for example, sphere. And when we turn on the volume shape, the things that are affected by volume become ungrayed out. With sphere specifically, we get volume exclusion, volume offsets, and volume sweep. We do also have section radius down here, which is not turned on because of the shape. If I chose torus, you'll notice now we have section radius uh, also included because of the torus shape. The shape of a torus uh, uses a section radius type of control, while a cube does not, for example, use volume sweep or section radius but a sphere does use volume sweep. A uh, cylinder uses volume sweep as well, and so on. You can kind of go through these and look and see which uh, shapes use which settings. So let's look at these different settings and see what they do. First, we have volume exclusion. And so what that essentially does, it reverses the field. Volume exclusion means that everything within the volume is not affected by the field, and everything outside it is. So that's like a kind of an inverse or reverse uh, reaction of the field's volume shape. Volume offset, we can uh, kind of look at this here. So we have a volume shape as sphere. Volume exclusion is turned off. We can rewind this. So we hit play and we can see again, it's kind of similar because my volume is as large as it is. But if I say volume exclusion is on, rewind and play, you notice a little bit of a difference there. Now because of uh, go back up here. Our max distance is 2 and so on. We're not, even the particles that are outside of the volume are not being affected because of our other settings. But you'll notice the particles that typically were affected are no longer because of the volume exclusion. Everything within the sphere is no longer affected. If I turn that, go back to sphere, turn this back off, rewind, play, then the particles react again as normal. So volume offset, let's say a volume offset of 10, something big. What happens is the actual volume itself is away from the pivot point of the field. So it just depends on how you want to position that volume in relation to the field's uh, icon or uh, pivot point. You can change the offset values like that. Section radius is again with the torus shape. So even though it's here available because I'm using a sphere, it won't really do anything. So I change my shape to a torus. You can go see that my, my torus shape. Then if I affect the section radius, you can kind of see what happens. It makes the torus, the donut shape, thicker or thinner. But of course, without using a torus, you, that section radius doesn't do anything. Let's go back to sphere. So again, section radius with a sphere's case, I can do whatever and nothing happens. Volume sweep, however, you notice I can kind of get the Pac-Man effect. I can change what percentage of the sphere is actually being used or displayed for that volume. If you've created any kind of NURBS objects before, you might know what volume or sweep or, this, or the uh, sweep effect does for those kinds of shapes. You can control what percentage of the shape is uh, visible. In this case, uh, anything that's not visible with the volume sweep, there we go. So again, only uh, particles or dynamic, dynamic objects within the region will be affected by the field. 
Let's go back to our options. So again, that was the volume offset XYZ. Again, that just moves the volume that it will affect objects away from the pivot point. The volume sweep, again, we just looked at. And so the volume shape uh, settings are all down here. So I think that covers everything about air, the air field. Air field's really cool. I think all these fields are really awesome. I really like uh, playing with dynamics. Uh, we'll go into other fields in the future, but I hope you enjoyed these two videos going over the air field and learned a little bit about how they work. Please feel free to comment, subscribe. If you have any uh, questions, let me know. Thanks again for watching, and I'll talk to you later.